What's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today I got my hands on the new Mi Box S Android TV and I want to do a quick review on it. Now before we get started, this is a very budget Android TV box. I picked mine up from my local Walmart for $39.99. As of making this video, they are on sale on walmart.com for that price, but they usually retail for around $60. Like I mentioned, this is a very budget Android TV box. If you're looking for the best of the best, go with the Nvidia Shield Android TV. And if you don't mind sacrificing the Android TV interface, I would recommend the Amazon Fire Stick 4K for around the same price as the Mi Box S. I will leave links in the description for everything I just mentioned. So inside of the box you get the Mi Box S, a short HDMI cable, your power supply, it's 2.5 amps at 5 volts, and the remote. Now the remote itself actually isn't bad, it does have voice control built in, there's not much functionality here, it runs on two AAA batteries that come with the unit, and overall for a cheap Android box it's great to see a little voice remote. The Mi Box itself is very compact. I actually like the sleek design of it. We only have one USB port on the back, power in, and HDMI out. There's also a 3.5mm audio jack in case you want to plumb this into your audio system. Other than that, there's not much going on with the box itself. But the main draw to this is it is running a real version of Android TV, which I absolutely love. I've been using the Shield since it was released, and I've just gotten really used to it. This is approved by Google, so we do have 4K YouTube, 4K Netflix, we also have HBO, Hulu. I could not get Amazon Video to install, which is a big disappointment, so you need to think about that before you look into getting one of these. The specs aren't out of this world. This is a very simple box here. The same CPU and RAM has been used in some of these Chinese boxes for a few years now. And actually, the Mi Box S has the same specs as the last Mi Box, but software has greatly improved here. So don't expect a powerhouse. The Amazon Fire Stick 4K is actually more powerful than this. And then if you want to jump up, you're just going to have to go with the Nvidia Shield Android TV. But for basic video playback and some light Android gaming, this box is perfect. For the CPU, we have the Amlogic S905XH, at least that's what it says on the CPU itself. It's a quad core at 1.5 gigahertz. The GPU, we have the Mali 450, They've always stated it's a 3 plus 2 GPU, but in all actuality, it's a 3 core GPU, so it's the Mali 450 MP3. RAM, we have 2 gigabytes of DDR3. Storage, 8 gigabytes of built-in storage, but we can add USB storage, be it USB drive or a powered USB hard drive. Full-size HDMI 2.0, so we can do 4K 60 Hz out, one USB 2.0 port on the back, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and for the operating system, it's running real Android TV 8.1 Oreo. And one of the reasons I want to stress that this is real Android TV is because there's a lot of Chinese boxes out there that state it runs Android TV. It's just a reskinned phone version of Android, so we don't get access to all the 4K apps that we should on a television. I also did a quick tear down, mainly to see how they were cooling this CPU. Now the Amlogics are set at a very high thermal threshold, so they can reach about 97 degrees Celsius before they start throttling. So minimal cooling is needed with these S905s, but they have added a piece of sheet metal here, and it does make contact with at least the sheet metal that goes over the CPU itself. So it is cooling off the CPU. I went ahead and pried the plate off of the CPU. We have our RAM, our storage, and our S905XH. So with all that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and boot this up and see how it performs. I'm not going to be running any benchmarks because the benchmarks are going to be very low with this S905. But I will be testing 4K video playback in Netflix and YouTube. I'm also going to test a native Android game, and then we'll move on to some emulation. All right, so here we are. I've installed a bunch of stuff, as you can see. The interface itself is way snappier than I ever thought it would be on this S905. They did a great job optimizing this for Android TV. First thing I wanted to test was some YouTube playback. Now, this is an 8K video, but it won't display as 8K. I can go to 4K, but unfortunately, my whole game capture is set up for 1080p. So really, what we're seeing here is a 1080p picture, even though I do have it set to 4K under quality here. And I'm going to turn on stats for nerds. We're going to see how much frame drop we get. But realistically, we're watching this at 1080p. I'm going to go ahead and move over to my 4K television. I'm just going to record it with my camera. It's not going to be great quality, but it'll give you an idea if it'll do 4K content. 
So the first thing you want to do is go into the settings and make sure your screen resolution is set to 4K. It says 4K, 2K, 60 hertz here. So we should be running at 4K, 60 FPS. First thing I'm going to test is Netflix. We'll head over here, find some 4K content, and see how well it plays it. With me recording this with my camera, it's definitely not doing the picture justice. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and see how long it takes to buffer out to the next section. I got a pretty fast internet connection here, and I can tell you that it did take a little longer than the NVIDIA Shield Android TV would. But overall, streaming 4K content should work pretty well on this device as long as you have a fast enough internet connection. Moving back over to YouTube, this video is set at 4K 60fps. I have stats for nerds on. And right out of the box, we already dropped two frames. It's less than I thought, and you won't notice this with your naked eye. It still looks beautiful, and it's very smooth playback. Like I said, with these couple drop frames here and there, you'll never notice it unless you have Stats for Nerds turned on. So overall, if you want to stream 4K content from Netflix and YouTube or even Hulu, the Mi Box S will handle it. Another great thing about this box is we have full access to Google Play. Well, at least the Android TV version of Google Play, and there's lots of games that are going to perform well on this device. One of them being Asphalt Extreme. Now, I was really impressed when I started playing this game. I don't notice any stutters. I mean, it's a steady frame right here. It's fully playable, and I'm actually using an Xbox One S controller because we do have Bluetooth built into this box. Now it's time to move over to some emulation. First up, we're gonna test PSP using PPSSPP 1.7.5, and we're gonna go with pretty much the benchmark of PSP, God of War Chains of Olympus. Everything is set as low as possible. I have some speed hacks on here, and performance isn't great. I really didn't expect it to run this game well. We're only at 19 FPS when we should be running at 60. You could always turn frame skip on, but then you got some sound issues, and it just doesn't look right. The next game I tested was Ratchet and Clank. Now this is a relatively easier game to run than God of War. I still have had issues on lower end devices. We should be running at a constant 30 FPS. Everything is set at low. But we do get some dips down into the 25 FPS zone. So it's not at full speed, and this doesn't mean that every PSP game is going to run horrible. There are some games that are going to run great on here, like Little Big Planet. That's just a really easy game to emulate using PPSSPP, and there's a few others out there also. What about N64 emulation? I'm using Moopin64 FZ Plus from the Google Play Store. This is GoldenEye, and it's not looking great here either. I do have the resolution pretty low, it's one above the lowest resolution, but when you set it to that 120 by 120 it looks absolutely horrible. It's unplayable even if the game is running at full speed. GoldenEye is just a problematic game, so let's test an easy one. We'll go with Mario Kart. And we're running at full speed. I have had some dips down to 28 FPS, but it's not really noticeable, it only happens really quick. So yeah, there are some N64 games that are going to run fine on the Mi Box S. And for the final test, I'll test out some PlayStation 1 emulation using ePSXE. You can download this from the Google Play Store. I'm going to jump right into some gameplay. Round FPS one. is listed in the top left hand corner, and it does PlayStation 1 really well. I mainly wanted to test this because of the recent release of the PlayStation Classic and how that went over with PAL games running on it. I mean, it's not a great system. But as you can see here, we're running this in NTSC mode because we're at 60 FPS, and it looks great. Got one more PlayStation game to test here. This is Crash Bandicoot. Looks great, and it's playing fine.
So overall, I think it's a decent deal for $40 if you don't already own an Android TV box. Like I mentioned at the beginning, if you want maximum performance, go with the Nvidia Shield Android TV. If you don't mind using Fire OS instead of a real Android TV interface, go with the Amazon Fire Stick 4K. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I mean, it does what it's advertised to do. It'll stream 4K video. You can play certain Android TV games. PlayStation 1 works great on here. And if you want to install RetroArch and play SNES, NES, Sega Genesis, 32X, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, it'll also work on here just as well. It's pretty much just another Android TV box with a real Android TV interface. I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel because I got a lot of great content on the way. And like always, thanks for watching.